Paula Patio here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day or night or whatever. Anyway, so today, while I was, <laughs> you know, listening to the previous video, audio, whatever I'm doing here, I'm sitting there on the sofa, and all of a sudden, what pops into my mind is the Balfour Declaration. And I said to myself, what? The Balfour Declaration? And then it hit me. Clicking. Ah, okay. I'm gonna try really hard to put some things together. How much I'm gonna put together, I don't know. But I have to give you teaspoons at a time, otherwise you'll get bored, and besides, that's the generation of today. You need to be constantly entertained, otherwise you get bored. And click elsewhere. Hopefully, with what I'm gonna share with you, will put you on the fast track to what I know. But, <laughs> you can't tap into my brain. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible, and in simply as possible. The Balfour Declaration is, in a nutshell, the birth of Israel. The second name that I want to run by you is Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri. I'm probably hacking up that name. And there's also another name that I would like for you to keep in mind, and that is Rabbi Ben Samuel. Rabbi Judah Ben Samuel, to be exact. Now, Rabbi Judah ben Samuel, he was a 12th century rabbi who predicted Israel's future. Actually, let me put it to you this way. He made some astonishing and specific predictions about the future of Jerusalem and Israel that came true. Ben Samuel was often called Light of Israel. Even bishops came to him for advice. If anyone asked him where his wisdom came from, he would answer, The prophet Elijah, who will precede the Messiah, appeared to me and revealed many things to me, and emphasized that the precondition for answered prayer is that it is fueled by enthusiasm and joy for the greatness and holiness of God. That's some answer. But to recap the astonishing predictions, in AD 1217, this scholarly and pious rabbi prophesied that the Ottoman Turks would rule over the Holy Land of Jerusalem for eight jubilees. Now, keep that in mind. He made this prediction 300 years before the Ottoman Turks seized control of Jerusalem in 1517. If indeed 1217 and 1517 were jubilee years, as Judah ben Samuel believed, then his prophecy was exactly right, because exactly 400 years after the Turks took control of Jerusalem, they were driven out of the city and the Holy Land in 1917 by the Allied forces under the command of General George Allenby. On Hanukkah, by the way, and there's more, the rabbi also prophesied that during the ninth jubilee, Jerusalem would be a no man's land. And this is exactly what happened 1917 to 1967 due to the fact that the Holy Land was placed under British mandate in 1917 by the League of Nations and literally belonged to no nation. Even after Israel's War of Independence in 1948 through 1949, Jerusalem was still divided by a strip of land running right through the heart of the city, with Jordan controlling the eastern part of the city and Israel controlling the western part of the city. That strip of land was considered and even called no man's land by both the Israelis and the Jordanians. It was not until the Six Day War in 1967 when the entire bank of the Holy Land was conquered by the Israeli army that the whole city of Jerusalem passed into the possession of Israel. So once again, the prophecy was made by the rabbi 750 years previously was fulfilled to the letter. It certainly would be significant if both 1917 and 1967 were jubilee years, considering the significance of what happened in Jerusalem on those years, but it even gets more interesting because Judah ben Samuel also prophesied that during the 10th jubilee, Jerusalem would be under the control of the Jews and the Messianic end times would begin. If he's right, the 10th jubilee began in 1967 and will conclude in 2017. Hmm, something to think about. Now I want you to remember the name Ariel Sharon. And there's a scripture in the Bible that says in Joel 3-2. And in the Hebrew Bible, it is Joel 4-2. It reads, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Then I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations.
nations, and they have divided up my land. Yep, like a Thanksgiving turkey. My point is this. There's a headline that reads, Ariel Sharon fought for the security of his people, even when that meant giving up land. Hmm, something to think about, huh? Now, let's talk about Rabbi Kaduri. A few months before he died, one of the nation's most prominent rabbis supposedly wrote the name of the Messiah on a small note, which he requested would remain sealed until a year after his death. And when the note was unsealed, it was revealed what many have known for centuries. Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Now, with the biblical names of Jesus, the rabbi described the Messiah using six words and hinting at the initial letters from the name of the Messiah. The secret note said, concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, comma, he will lift the people and prove that his word and law are valid. This I have signed in the month of mercy, Yatsik Kaduri. The Hebrew sentence translated, you know, which I just said to you, with the hidden name of the Messiah reads, I can't say it, but there's a link to the article. But here's the point. One of Israel's most prominent rabbis indicating the name of the Messiah is Yeshua. It is understandable why his last wish was to wait one year after his death before revealing what he wrote. I also want to mention that the rabbi stated that the Messiah will return shortly after Ariel Sharon's death. Now, we don't know God's time clock. But Ariel Sharon died January 11th, 2014. It's only a few years ago. Hmm. Now, when you go watch that Scotty Clark movie, and also the Rabbi Kaduri documentary, and also that little one I thought was pretty interesting, and also, well, maybe I should save that for another one. But anyway, when you see Scott Clark's, he's going to talk about the blood red moons. And it all ties in. Just a little, I guess, breadcrumb. The four blood moons that occurred, something spectacular happened on each and every one of them. And it all ties in with what I just went over with you. Now, go watch those videos. They're really good. Believe me, I would not send you to a video that is really bad. Oh my gosh, how can I put you through that torment? So, these are some of the thoughts that are going through my head. Now, I wonder if the Christians that are out there, if they wonder about the Jewish aspect of Jesus. They're not teaching that at church. And I wonder if the churches are talking about repentance, which the ones I've plugged into via internet, no, they haven't been talking about repentance. In my opinion, I think there's many churches that are tickling people's ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. Now, here's another thing that I was thinking about, and I think you're going to get a kick out of this. I think the main language is going to be Hebrew up in heaven. Woohoo! Okay, I think that's enough for now. Lord's coming back. Until then, have a great day.